Welcome everybody, my name is Jesse Evans and today we'll be doing a couple of civil 3D tips and tricks. And the one we have today for you is GIS data to civil 3D pipes. How is that going to happen? And if we look at the agenda here, I'm going to run through step by step. So I'm not downloading a shape file offline or anything like that. I'm going to make it, I'm going to add my custom attributes, map export and use the wizard. So if I just talk about this in more detail, basically what I'm going to have, I'm going to have an AutoCAD drawing that has lines and blocks. Then I'm going to create some custom GIS attributes and I'm going to use the map 3D program that's a part of Civil 3D. So if you're using Civil 3D, you have map 3D installed and I'll show you how to access it. Once I create the custom GIS attributes, I'm going to attach those custom attributes to AutoCAD objects. So these are not map objects yet until I use the map export command. And what that does, it takes the AutoCAD objects and it merges them with the GIS attributes. So then I'll have them in an external place. Typically it's a shape file and that's what we're going to use now. And then I'm going to use the Civil 3D GIS import wizard to actually import that information and generate the pipes along the way. So just jumping right along here, I'm going to actually get into the software and I'm going to start developing my pieces here. So the first thing that I'll do, I'm just going to say I have some type of pipe run. I'm not going to get really crazy with the elevations or anything like that, but I'm going to say I'm going to insert a block here and I have this manhole block. And I'm going to say there's one there and I'll copy this a couple of times and I'm going to say that there's a system that's going to Y right, and, and get a little bit larger. So I'll start to put lines in between these, right? These will represent my pipes, all right? So one thing you have to understand about a shape file, there's point objects and there's line objects, all right? And the manholes are going to be point objects, and then the lines are going to be exactly that. They're going to be line objects. So we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. All right, but here's my storm run, right? I have a manhole pipe, manhole pipe, and I want to add some attributes to this. So the first thing that I want to just point out, I'm going to open my properties box. And if you look here, there's nothing called OD or object data. All right, none for the pipe and none for the actual manhole. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change out to the map 3D program. And that's as easy as using this drop down at the top and selecting the planning and analysis. When you do this, you're going to get a different set of tabs up the top. I'm going to go over to map setup and then I have this one define object data. And really all I'm doing in here is creating the custom attributes that I talked about in the PowerPoint. All right, since I have two pieces, I'm going to create two tables. I'm going to call this first table storm MH, storm manholes. I'm going to have the type set to real, right? So a real number can have a decimal place. And I'm going to set the field type here. I'm just going to do rim. All right, I could add a description and different things like that, but I'm going to add that up. Now, depending on other types of information that you may need, maybe you'll need a sump in these manholes, or maybe you'll need a different uh, cone shape or something like that. Again, I would start to add more attributes in this area. All right, but I'm just going to leave it go with the rim. All right, so that's one type of table. I'm going to say new table, and I'm going to do a storm pipe. Again, since I'm going to have decimal places, I'll be a real number. And I'm going to do invert out, right? And I'll add that. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to say invert in. Add that. And I want a inner DIA, right? So I'm going to say my inner pipe diameter. And again, it's a real number. And I'll say add. All right, so I'll say OK. And now you'll notice that I have two tables in here that I could add information. 
So I'm going to take these attributes and now I'm going to merge them onto my pipes and my mammals. So I'll close this dialog box here. And since we have that set up, I'm going to go over to the Create tab. And then there's this option here to attach and detach object data. Now I could start to set invert elevations here, right? And then attach it to the objects one at a time, right? But what I tend to do, I tend to attach it to all and then work in the properties box. So I'm just going to say I have my storm pipe up at the top and I'm going to say attach two objects and I'm just going to get my pipes. All right, so those go in. I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just going to make sure that I have my storm manhole attached to objects and I'll get all my manholes. Now, after I do that, I could select these pieces and notice here I have this OD, I have the object data. So this is coming from those custom attributes that I have and I only have one here for the manhole and it's rim. Now I'm going to keep the math really light, right? So I'm going to say that this is 100.56 here, right? That's going to be my rim elevation. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'll say that this is 98 in the box here. 98.65, whatever it may be. And I just want to get some kind of elevation. So when you actually see the civil 3D model, it'll make a little bit more sense. So I have some different um, elevations. Okay. And the last one here, maybe I'll do 85.69 in the box. Okay. Now, that's for the manholes, but the pipes are a little bit different because there's a little bit more information. So I'm going to say it's leaving this structure, right? And that structure I was at 100, so I'll say that it's going to drop down to 97.36. Again, I'm just using random information. It would be whatever your design is. My in is going to be when it's coming into this pipe here. So I'm going to say this is down at, um, I believe, 90 or so. I'm going to say that this is actually 92.89, right? And then I'm going to say that that pipe inner diameter there is 12 inches, okay? So I'll go around and I'm going to pause the video and then come back, but I'm going to go to these other two and add the other two pieces here. All right, so I'm back and I just want to just point out a couple of things. I added some numbers in here, so I select this one. Again, the out is up the top, the in is down here, and then that's going to be a 12 inch pipe again. I'll select this guy here, and again, I'll start to see here's my out, here's my in, and then this is going to be a larger pipe, it's going to be a 24 inch pipe. So coming down, getting larger into one. All right, now I have my attributes associated to these AutoCAD objects, but I need to use the map export command, right? And I'm just typing it in there. And what this does, it allows you to export out to multiple different types. But we're going to use the Esri shape. And remember, when you're doing this, you either have to select a point or a line, right? So for shape files. So I'm going to say that I'm going to put this in my pipe export folder. And I'm going to say that this is the storm MH, the storm manholes. I'll say OK. I could select all or I could just do a manual. And since I'm so small here, I'm just going to get the four pieces. All right, so I have my pieces right down to mommy ski. There's four. I'll go over to the data and this is where I'm going to actually merge these pieces, right? So this is my storm hole information, right? Storm manhole. I want to make sure that that rim goes along. And then in the last one, it wants to know if I want to convert the data. I'm actually in Pennsylvania, so I'm going to keep it in the U.S. foot south zone. And I'll say OK. So really quick, I have an exported shape file out there that's ready to go in for my next piece. All right. But now I want to do another one and I'm going to call this storm pipes. And I'll say OK. Again, this is going to be a line. Select manually. I want to go over to the data. I want to make sure that I have the object data attached to these. 
Let's do okay. And again, I don't want to convert my coordinate system. I'll say okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move these off to the side because we're going to see a new set of objects come in. So I'll just say move. And this just AutoCAD line works. So I'm just going to move it over here. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch back to Civil 3D. So I'm using the top here and I'm going to say Civil 3D. Right, just changing the interface. I'll close my properties box. I no longer need that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to the Insert tab. And I have this import drop down and I could say import GIS data. Okay, now this is somewhat important. If I click the three dots, I'm only going to be able to select one shape file. If I use the folder, I'm going to be able to select multiple. And this is important because I'm going to have manholes and pipes. So I'm going to get multiple. Right, so it's inside this pipe export. I'll say open. I'll click on connect. Notice next does not highlight it. When I click on connect, it actually sees those files. I'll hit next. It wants to know what I'll call this, and I'll call it a simple storm run. I'll use my storm sewer parts. Right, I don't have any surface or anything, any of that information. I'll hit next. All right, it's all coming in the South Zone, Pennsylvania. Next. And this is really where you have to do some of the work here. Okay. It realizes that it has lines and points, right? Notice so there's a pipes, which is lines, and then there's a mapping data structures, which are the points. So it understands that this is the storm pipes. These are going to be circular pipes. I'm going to click add. All right. Now, if you're familiar with Civil 3D, you'll start to get an idea of what you have in here. These are some typical things. And if I expand geometry, upslope, downslope, right? It's everything that makes this piece up, right? Part data. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down to the part data. And since it's the pipe, oh, look at what I have. I could see the attributes inside there. So I'm going to say that this is the inner diameter of the pipe. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to start to look at my start and end inverts. So my start invert elevation is actually the out, right? So the invert out and the end invert is the invert in, right? Because we are coming from the top down going through the pieces. So that takes care of all those. I'll hit next and I'm going to do the same thing. I have the storm manholes, I'll hit add. And these attributes are slightly different, right? And these are all the attributes that you could add. Here's my rim elevation. I want to make sure that I pick up that surface elevation. I'll hit next. I'll use the default shape. This is going to allow you to filter, right? So if you don't want to have the entire network come in or the entire city of inlets, you could say, just show me this little area, all right? But since mine is so small, it's just this little design, I'm gonna say import all. I'll hit next. And this is nice. Since I actually imported both of these, the structures and the pipes, I could say snap together and create the network, right? So if they're within that tolerance, they'll actually snap together. So I'm happy with that. I'll hit finish. Okay. It imported the pipes and this is what we're looking at here. And first of all, if I just take this and put it in the object viewer, right? I just want to show you a really simple, all of this information was flat. It had the information attached, but now we're actually generating a model from these pieces. And we can see it going down. If I turn it right exactly to the left, we can see that these rim elevations are definitely getting picked up. And then the structures are stretching to actually get the lowest elevation of those pipes as they come down, All right? So that's what I have and that's what I was going to plan on showing you. So let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.